Today, Matrix, we are going to be looking at the peripheral nervous system. And so if you are following through on your textbook, we are on page 126. So a very quick recap from our uh, lesson two days ago. We originally were looking at the central nervous system, which from our previous lesson, you would have remembered that the central nervous system consists of our brain and the spinal cord. But now today what we need to look at is all of the other regions of the nervous system that sit outside of the central nervous system. And if you have a look at the diagram, you will see that these are all the nerves that innervate your muscles, your organs, and effectively everything outside of this central nervous system. Now, the central nervous system was responsible for processing information, whereas the peripheral nervous system is responsible for carrying out functions. Now, the two main functions of our peripheral nervous system has to do with senses, and with motor function. And if you look back at the diagram, that does link into where you can see the nerves because senses are obviously linked to things like your organs, like your skin and your ears, and your motor function is linked to your muscles. We are going to focus on the motor functions of the peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system is then divided into two further nervous systems, which we call the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Their names do give away um, a very basic understanding of their function. Somatic can refer to body and bodily functions, and autonomic almost leads us to think of automatic functions. And the main differences between somatic and autonomic is that your, sy your somatic nervous system is responsible for all of your skeletal movement. And that means that it is going to be responsible for all of your voluntary movement as well. So this is the part of the body that you, you would use to walk and move around, and these are voluntary controls. On the other side of that, we have the autonomic nervous system, and you need to think of this as being the system that is responsible for all of your involuntary movements. And so, remember, that means that you don't need to think about any actions. They happen on their own. Your body has its, its own way of mediating how it functions. And the autonomic system is responsible for your smooth muscles as opposed to your skeletal muscles. And it is also responsible for things like your glands and their secretions. Now, the autonomic system divides once more again into our sympathetic and our parasympathetic divisions. And effectively, what it is, um, you are going to have a fight and flight response or a rest and digest response. Now if we have a look at the diagram in front of us, what they've done is that they have the brain with the spinal cord coming out of it on each one and then they have a number of organs linked to their corresponding nerves. Now if we look uh, specifically at the parasympathetic division, I want you to think of parasympathetic, almost paralyzed, and it's often associated with the idea of rest and digest, keeping in mind that the body um, spends most of its time in this particular uh, state, 
And it is, it's when you're in rest, you are digesting food, you require uh, the least amount of reaction and reflexes at this point. And if you have a look also at the diagram closely, you will notice that the majority of our nerves in the parasympathetic division come either from the cranial region or from the sacral region. And that's effectively just for efficiency and to use pathways efficiently because you're not doing very much when you are in the parasympathetic um, system. On the other hand, we have the sympathetic division, which we're very familiar with when we think of the idea of fight or flight. And this one we're very familiar with because we always associate it with things like um, adrenaline and your body's response to an emergency situation. And effectively, the sympathetic nervous system is allowing you to react as quickly as possible in order to preserve yourself. Because at the end of the day, the nervous system's main responsibility is to preserve the body and to keep homeostasis. Now, if you have a look at the nerves and how they're different in terms of their location, you will see that in the sympathetic nervous system, there are nerves that leave the spinal column all the way through the lumbar and thoracic region. And the main reason for that is when you want quick, efficient reactions, you want nerves to be able to go directly to the motor function that you want. You don't want to have to wait for it to get there. Now, in order for the body to respond correctly, since it spends most of its time in its parasympathetic state, um, most of our organs are double innerviated. In other words, it means that an organ will have a double set of nerves. Um, and for an example, if you look at the diagram, you can see something like the liver has both parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves. And that's because it requires two reactions. It requires a resting reaction, but it also requires a fight or flight reaction. Now, to illustrate this a little bit better, I'm just going to use a quick example of with um, your rest and digest and your fight and flight and what it would look like by looking at your pupil. Now, when you are in a uh, relaxed environment, your pupil will be fairly constricted. And the simple reason for that is when you are relaxed, you don't require a lot of light to come into the eye because you're not taking in much detail, you're not focused on anything um, in particular, and so the pupil is fairly constricted. However, when we are fighting and flighting, you will notice if you have a look at the diagram during the sympathetic reaction, the pupil dilates. And the reason for that would be obviously that you now need to fight and flight. It means you need to see better, you need to focus better, and allowing more light into the eye allows you to see better. And so looking at these two responses, we can see that they are both involuntary. And they are effectively a response to the environment or what is occurring outside of the body. And that all then again links back all the way to the central nervous system. Because remember, if you are going to have to have a response, you are going to need to then take the information from these receptors and then formulate a response um, into the uh, central nervous system. In your textbook, there are a number of examples of the different body parts and their sympathetic and parasympathetic reactions. They're on page 129. In terms of having to know all of them, I don't think it's necessary to learn them all and off by heart. I do think, though, that you could have a fairly clear understanding of perhaps what your body is doing when it is resting and digesting 
and a good idea of what is fighting and flighting mean and I would I would suggest going through the table and perhaps making an overall view as to what the body is doing not necessarily learn each one individually because I don't think it's necessary and also if you look in your exam guideline all you need to know for our peripheral and autonomic nervous systems is the location and the functions of each of them and so I think that we've done that very clearly in this section now. Yet again, please refer to your textbook, read through these sections, and reach out to your respective teachers for any clarification.